Christine. Oh, Christine. Oh, yeah, Christine. Yeah. Oh, you look great in that bikini. Oh. What are you doing? You're supposed to start the show. Wake up! What? What the? Oh, Mr. Smith, I'm uh. Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Oh God. What? The show? Oh, what is it? Oh. Uh. Uh. Oh. Um. Hello, uh, everybody. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a little. Uh. I'm a little late on the draw. Oh, jeez. Oh, fell asleep at the computer. What? Oh, um, don't mind. You know what? I'm going to go get, uh, Mr. I got, I got inking to do. Uh, I'll be right back. Damn it, Chris. What the hell? All you had to do was start the show on time. I cannot believe you were sleeping at your job. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I am here for you guys. Just want to say howdy do Monday. Oh, my man is falling asleep at the job. That is embarrassing. And he's dreaming of Christine. That is uh, that is not good either. Um, I so apologize about that. That should that not so have happened. Um, anyhow, here we are today. Welcome, everybody. Hyper guys, you hello. Good morning, Vietnam. Yes, Robin Williams. Good morning, North Free. Morning, uh, Val. Hello to you. Past Master Dan has a frag up. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. That was Chris. Uh, Brian Polito is hosting today. Nope, that was my favorite anchor in the world, Chris. Sleeping at the job. Ronald knows someone fell asleep with his pants down. Thank God his pants weren't down. Uh, Val says he likes how I'm getting more theatrical on every video. I don't know what you mean. I mean, you heard me come in uh, and have to yell at him and wake him up and get him the hell out of the captain's chair. Just ridiculous. Jay Lee, morning to you. Uh, ripping someone a new one on Twitter. Oh, you have to tell me. JP says it's Green Lantern time. It is. Uh, sounds like potential sexual harassment. It is. You know what? I believe you can file sexual harassment against somebody, even if they are sleeping in their chair. Uh, Fire Chris, bring in Kyle Ritter. Kyle is fantastic. He's probably a little bit out of my price range, though. Um, guys, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the channel. Um, I'm going to show you guys today the video for First Man Volume 2. It is uploaded to my channel. If you haven't seen it yet, here is the debut for First Man Volume 2. Sign up now. Link in the description below to sign up. Debut just for you guys. Let's watch it together.
Whoa, there it is. The world debut for First Man Volume 2. Like I said, link is in the description below. Please sign up now to receive 10% off upon launch. Also, uh, if you haven't got First Man yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. I got two packages going out today. Uh, two people bought the Extreme Bundle, which is Volume 1.2, the program book in the Bark Sears variant cover. So there you have it, guys. Books go out daily, so get that. Yeah, you definitely want to get this bad boy. 64 pages of fun-filled comic book action. Val says, I don't even mind the word. Yes, looks nice. Thank you. Getting better with every crazy new comic. You know it. Oh, AAT, that's awesome. Yes, it is. All right, guys, uh, let's get on to why we're here today. Uh, my very first gig in, not, not my first gig. I always say that. Oh, my first gig in comics, DC Comics, was an issue of Suicide Squad, which I have not looked at in over 20 years. I have all the original art to it. Um, I've got it in a box sealed i have it on an oversized fedex box all 22 pages of original art in a fedex box sealed it's been that way for 22 years i won't break that seal for i don't know how many more years i don't really enjoy looking at my past work i like to move forward um so that was my first job never saw print my second job for dc was justice league quarterly number five I believe they were called the Guardians of the Globe or the Global Guardians, something like that. And um, uh, it was in Justice League Quarterly Number 5, which, as the title says, it's a quarterly book. came out every three months. It was an anthology book, like 80 pages, 50 pages. I don't know. I did a seven-page story in issues 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, I believe. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I believe 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 starring the guardians of the globe global guardians i can't remember their name um but that wasn't enough to keep me busy so my third job was this green lantern annual that i would work on at the same time as the global guardian stuff so i'm a young fresh-faced 20 year old kid i've got 56 pages to draw in front of me i'm nervous as hell i've never drawn 50 i've never you know, I drew one whole issue of a book and then a seven page story. And now I'm about to launch into 56 pages. Don't break the seal. I don't plan on it. That Willingham cover really gets your attention. Surprise, DC approved it. And, and you know, I was a huge fan of Bill Willingham growing up. In fact, I can show you as my Siri, ugly face. Oh, shut up, Siri. I bought, I'll pop this. Like I said, huge fan of Bill Willingham growing up. The Elementals I bought as a kid, loved the Elementals, loved Bill Willingham's work. So I wasn't, of course, at the level of being able, you know, I just got into business and they wanted somebody proven to uh, to do the cover. So uh, Val says that cover is awesome on so many levels. Hal Jordan smacking a bitch down. Star Sapphire. But like I said, I love Bill Willingham's Elementals work. Um, I loved it when he inked his own stuff. Look at that. AA in the foreground. So anyhow, I bought this as a kid. Uh, I was feeling pretty good uh, about that stuff. So Bill Willingham doing a cover was fine with me. Um, it'd be fun if I went back and redrew the cover and, you know, same layout and everything just to do it and have it colored up and put all this stuff on it if i had time i had time uh what's that say i wish we could get an elementals revival since andrew rev owns them i doubt we'll receive them i have no idea who that is and i didn't realize bill didn't own them uh because i'd love to see the elementals come back anyhow enough about me let's get back to the stream of goodness so there we have the cover uh, I was uh, page one. I get to start off with a great cool shot of all these Green Lanterns. Um, like I said, 56 pages. Uh, my buddy at the time, John Beatty, I asked him. I only knew John at this time for a few months. And I asked him if he would please ink the job. 
uh, because he was a legend in the industry when it came to anchors. He was somebody I admired as a kid growing up and uh, we became friends and he said, yes, I will ink the job over you. And I was like, yes, John Beatty. So I got a seasoned professional to do the inks. Um, you know, 56 pages was daunting. I remember talking to Andy Kubert and Andy telling me, don't think about it as 56 pages. Think about it one page at a time. Take it one page at a time, one day at a time, just like that TV show, just like you should live life. Just think about it one day at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. And that's what I tried to do. Uh, so here we have it. Nice big page introducing some Green Lanterns. It would have been cool if it was just a splash page instead of a three panel page. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, we got a bursting out the other side. Lots of figures going on and stuff moving the camera around. Um, uh, and if you guys will notice, I could have taken the actual comic book, laid it flat and adjusted my over an overhead camera to look down on it as I paged through it. But you know what? I care about you guys so much that I took the time to literally cut apart the book. I mean, I've got a couple of them. And it's not like you can't buy it for a dollar. So I've got a paper cutter. I, I cut right down the spine since it was square bound and uh, took the time to uh, scan all these pages in to do it the right way. Uh, Val says, Hal Jordan is also a Green Lantern that Ethan drew, right? Yes, it is. And Hal Jordan is in the story. So anyhow, uh, you know, lots of Green Lanterns here. Uh, some of the things I like about this, I like some of the panel layouts I did. Um, I like the fact I was leaving enough room for word balloons. You know, some of the art's okay. I was going really heavier with some of the shadows on some of the stuff. Uh, John Stewart, one of my faves back here, clapping it up, saying, yay, good job. Uh, I don't remember. I think I've got a lot of this original art. I also know I sold some. Uh, Ronald says the view's better. Good looking out. You know it. Try to, I try to do my best. I mean, unfortunately, you know, uh, I couldn't go in and adjust colors and all that stuff. I mean, you know, but I did scan them for you guys. I had fun doing graphic shapes like this in the background. I was experimenting. Uh, one of my favorite artists at the time was, and so is Larry Stroman, and he did cool graphic designy shapes. I was experimenting with that. Um, anyhow, let's move on. And this deals with the Eclipso stuff from the 90s. So Bart uh, Sears designed this throne as he drew the Eclipso one shots that tied into all this stuff. I thought the letterer did a pretty snazzy job. Bob Lappin, one of my favorite letterers, lettered all the Justice League stuff. He was just so good. I loved his lettering style. These were lettered on their original boards. Remember, this was 1991. Um, Gerard Jones was the writer. I believe Gerard Jones has had some legal issues recently uh, within the past few years, if anybody wants to check that. Uh, Hyper Kaiju says, love the throne and the drapes. Well, you chalk it up to Bart. He designed the throne and the stuff going on behind him and stuff. Eclipse is a little pissed off right here. He wants Green Lantern. Uh, we turn the page and uh, I got to thank Bart. And when I say thank Bart, I mean that very sarcastically for the design of this freaking uh, tower castle thing on the moon that he designed. That was not exactly fun to draw. Thank God I only drew it once or so. Anyhow, then we cut down to New York City. New York City. Ah, the Twin Towers. And Starman. I got to draw one of my favorite characters, Starman. Uh, Starman kicking it to uh, 42nd Street back then. Uh, New York wasn't as cleaned up as it is now. Well, actually, is it really cleaned up now? I guess it's still kind of cleaned up. Just the violence is getting a little crazy. Uh, Giuliani cleaned it up. But anyhow, Starman coming up a bunch, some thugs here. And he's like, and we don't realize from this angle, Starman is infected. 
Dun, dun, dun. There's the diamond. Whoa. I mean, it does look cool. You got to give it that. So this guy gets the diamond. Now he's infected. And he sees these mofos here. Um, I probably would have colored this more theatrically with the lighting since I did such harsh lighting. Instead of regular flesh tones, I might have done something else in the foreground. Uh, ooh, this said sex, but they colored up. They covered, colored, covered up the bottom X with a balloon. He goes up to some ho ho and flicks her the diamond. So I try to get a little funky here with the diamond going, you know, fluttering through multiple panels. Uh, New York City's now full of SJW filth. I haven't been there in forever. Probably is. She catches it. She's like, what is this? Oh, I get it. Royal show place. You got some, uh, some uh, dancers and stuff. This is my buddy Jim Sanders I drew right here. We were sharing a studio at the time, so I drew my buddy Jim Sanders kicking the diamond, fluttering over. Jim Sanders goes inside the dumpy strip club there. I drew my buddy John Beatty. John Beatty likes the ladies at the strip club. He goes into the back room. You know what happens in the back room of strip clubs. These hoes be slapping down from their pimps, yo. Diamond bounces on the ground. She's like, what's this? Oh, picks up her hairbrush. A little scan problem here. That's why it's a little, little off. Stabs the dude in the neck with the hairbrush. What the heck is going on there? Oops. Uh, then we cut to Guy Gardner. New York City has become so bad. My family that has lived there since the early 1800s has stated they are closing the main office of their business and relocating to Plano, Texas. Texas, baby. Home of the free. Anyhow, we got Guy Gardner. Guns. Nah, I just can't see it. Me, Guy Gardner, buying guns. It's off panel. Diamond gets flipped his way. He's walking down. Big Belly Burger was a running joke back then in all the DC books. That's where everybody ate Big Belly Burger. Diamond comes flipping. He's like, Jordan. He doesn't like how Jordan. He's like, what? Diamond, what's this? <gasps> how ah! Jordan burst in the room in the lamest way possible. Me just breaking into business. Not exactly drawing comics the Marvel way with excitement. Yeah, I tilted the camera, but that's pretty, uh, pretty boring. The door, he should have just come running in, hand out. And we would have got the gist that he pushed the door open. But no, I wanted to show him with the hand planted on the door, bent over all. Carol, what's wrong? She's like, Hal, I had a nightmare, Hal. Hal, help me. He's like, yo, babe, cool it down some. Let's chat. And then I don't know how the colors got the neck wrong because it's green here. But he did. She's like, oh, Hal, come. Come save me in bed. Getting his uniform. She's laughing at him. Not cool. Uh-oh. Now she's talking about her nightmare. So, you know, I was experimenting. You know, first first main job. I, I was, you know, this is supposed to be more spooky and everything. Uh, Pop says, small three-day show this weekend. Just going to do day one. How about you? That's cool. I love shows. Uh, I think that for first man, number three, Apollo needs to clean up New York. Maybe. Uh, Jones was doing so many books at the time. I think he was doing a little detail as possible. Don't know. Uh, I know he was writing a lot. But anyhow, so I was experimenting with shadows to give a spooky feel and things like that. Just experimenting. She's got this whacked out dream talking to her dad whose feet are in a casket. That's weird. Um, yeah, so uh, it's just kind of a weird book. And then she's sitting on daddy's lap. And then, uh oh, Star Sapphire, the Sapphire Brigade, she's smacking her down. Then she becomes the Star Sapphire. Wow, chicka, wow, wow, chicka, wow, wow. Uh, let's see. 
And do you draw friends in comics for fun? Ever draw a guy you didn't like in a comic out of spite? Nope. Can't say that I have. Can't say that I have. Uh, this is the piano. This is from some Silver Age Green Lantern comic with the whole Star Sapphire thing. Actually, I just read it. It's uh, it's early in the run of the original Green Lantern from the Silver Age. Anyhow, uh-oh. Cat my twee. Cat my twa. Twee, twa. However you say it. On the ground, blood spilling out. Oh, he says this bee is hot. Then we cut back, and he's like, tell me more about your dreams, little lady. Maybe I should get under the covers with you to help you out. He's like, no. And she's talking more about her dreams. He's trying to comfort her because that's what a good man does. And I did this funky shape just for design stuff. Just like I said, playing around here, trying to play around different type of shots, things like that, breaking panel borders, you know, just. You know, in the business, it's my it's my first real big job trying to get some perspective flying in here with the figures and stuff. Green Lantern coming in to save the day. She's like, I'm not going to have any of this. This bitch is just fierce flying at our man here. Slices up Green Lantern. And then, oh, no, it's Carol slicing up Green Lantern. She's got kind of a fro going on. I don't know what I was doing with her hair. But she's like, and I love that. She's, she's whispering in like Joe Biden did last week. That was me. I got the $1.9 trillion. <laughs> what was with Joe Biden last week in that press conference? Oh, my God, when that dude goes off his medication. They're staying in some sleepy Super 6 motel. You can tell by the little lamp on the wall. He's like, go back to sleep, honey bun. I'll tuck you in. I'll stay here until you fall asleep. And then he's just thinking to himself, looking at the moon. <gasps> Color overlay that's not lined up properly. Man, this just pissed me off. I remember when this came out thinking to myself, damn it. See how this edge right here of her face cuts perfectly with the knuckles and the uh, edge of the curtain? Yeah, that's because this was on an overlay and should be slid over when it was printed to line up perfectly. But no, North Free knows it. Whispering Creepy Joe. Creepy Joe was using the whisper that he does to little kids when he strokes their hair. He's like, I like the feel of your hair. You must use Pert Shampoo. Pert Plus. Bringing sexy back. Joe Biden's bringing dementia back. You know it. Groping Joe. You all as president's hella weird. Yeah, he is. I'll take some funny tweets any day of the week over what we got now. He's looking through the window. It's hard to tell if there's a little bit of white zipatone. You're like, white zipatone? What's white zipatone? Zipatone itself is the pattern that you would cut out and put down. It's usually a black dot pattern to indicate indicate shading. White zipatone is just the opposite. It's white dots. So John put it down so you get the feel that he's looking through a window. It's hard to tell, but you can see it better in the book. Uh-oh, somebody's looking at him from the shadows. Who is it? <gasps> it's Guy Gardner. Eclipso Gardner. Pert. Pert shampoo shows my age as in I used pert shampoo when I had hair. Last time I had to buy shampoo. Back to the royal show place. Some detectives are here talking about what's going on. There's a creepy cat in the foreground for some reason. I can't honestly remember if this cat has anything to do with the story or not. I just decided to draw a cat. Check out the angle of the limo. Then we're back to Guy Gardner flipping up his uh, uh, diamond there at the old Shady Winds Motel Lodge. Uh, A.J. Miller, how difficult is it to use Zipatone? Well, in this day and age, you use all the Zipatone. You can just do, even with your originals, take your originals, scan them in, 
go to Clip Studio, Manga Studio Pro, as it used to be called. And uh, you can just use Clip. You can just pick from Zipatone that way. In the old days, you would it's a sheet like an 11 by 17 sheet. You'd lay down and you can see through it and then you would cut it out with an X-Acto knife and then peel it up and place it down over uh, over the area you wanted zip it tone. So not too, not too hard. Um, so yeah, we got Guy Gardner here, a little split lighting and stuff. I like what they did, the lighting there. He's raging. He's like, I'm gonna go get me some Hal Jordan, but I'm gonna do it the evil way by putting the, putting the Eclipso stone down there. Poor Hal doesn't even see it, walks right by it going back to his room. What a big dumb dumb. Uh, let's see. Hope Guy Gardner goes full Eric and Jerk. He is always that way. I think this is the last time we see Guy Gardner, actually. Oh, here's a fun fact. I got halfway through drawing this issue when my editor called me up and said, Dude, you've been drawing Hal Jordan's ring on the wrong finger. You need to fix it. John didn't catch it. I didn't catch it. And you're going, Andy, how do you draw Hal Jordan's ring on the wrong finger? Well, I drew it on the proper hand, but I drew it on his ring finger because I assume ring, ring finger. No, it goes on his middle finger. So I had to go back in and redraw Hal Jordan's ring on the proper finger. Anyhow, Carol can't sleep. She steps out. She's like, I can't sleep. Looks down. Oh, my God. Look at this pretty jewel. I'll pick it up. Why not? She bends over to pick it up and what i don't feel so good dun, dun, dun. whoa and then we've got the star sapphire costume over top of her this is way back before computer coloring she doesn't feel so good and kablam there she goes dun, 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 dun. star sapphire is now infected she goes to hal's room I must get Hal. I must infect Hal. Oh, smash through. Oh, this little bit of leg right here is colored yellow right there instead of flesh colored. What are you going to do? JP's busted my chops. Wrong. Oh, how is this colored? Uh, old school. Hold on. Wrong finger. You're a Hal fan. I am. And I still got it wrong. I must admit, I really dig how old school this comic looks. What year was this released? 1992. I drew it in 1991. It came out in 1992. How is this colored? Comics were colored back in the day with Dr. Martin dyes. They're a type of watercolor. And uh, basically, they would take the black and white original art and photocopy it onto 8.5 by 11 paper, print size, and then the colors would take it and take their Dr. Martin dyes and color it on the eight and a half by 11 copy paper. And then they would have to code it. So they would have each color has a specific color code that they would have to point an arrow to. And then on the border of the eight and a half by 11 paper, they would write the code. And um, that's how comics were colored back then. And then the printer would print going by those codes. So, uh, Val's making me feel old. Seven years old back then. I was 10. So I was drawing comics when I was 10. Just kidding. She's pissed. Takes off out of the hotel. Hal's coming back from the vending machine. He's like, what the hell happened? His energy ring says, uh-oh, Star Sapphire. I got to get out of this place. I got to bust out of here. So he takes off out of here, changing into Green Lantern. Look at him, boxer shorts and socks and a wife beater. Thank you for explaining. No worries. I uh, think I still have a set of Dr. Martin dyes. I still have my Dr. Martin dyes from the Kubert school. Not that they're probably any good anymore. Uh, then we cut over to a hangar at Ferris Aircraft. But hold on. I, because I care about you guys, am going to show you guys a color guide from comic books. From the old days. Let's see what I can find here on Google. Google. To show you guys what a color guide looked like. 
Uh, okay. Come on now. Come on. Let's see if this one gets any bigger. This, my friends, is what a color guide looks like. So this is on eight and a half by 11 copy paper. And the colorist would go in with Dr. Martin dyes, color all over it. And then they'd have to go in with these codes right here and point to the different colors and say R2, which is red. I think two is 50 percent. Uh, Val says, oops, did you color the first man mango surprise ad the old way? Uh, I colored the first man ad flat color because that's how comics were usually done back then, as you can see with this Green Lantern, flat color, but I did it in Photoshop because they didn't print right from these color guides. These were given to the printer and given to a color separator so the separator could separate out all the different colors. It's really a, a process, let me tell you. Uh, oh, here's a better shot of it. So, and this is on eBay. So you can go and buy these color guides. Uh, from eBay, a friend of mine, Brad Vancata, who colored X-Force number one, still has his original color guides. How and Carol living in a motel at the time. I did not know that. Thank you, JAP, for uh, filling me in. Anyhow, cut to nighttime at a hangar, trying to fix an aircraft. Dude's like, I'm doing my best, yo. And then boom, it gets all blown up. Who would do that? <gasps> Carol Wood, that's who. So you can see early Andy Smith in regards to the layouts I was doing back then. Uh, Ferris Air was run by other people. Carol was helping out. Oh, there you go. Uh, beautiful, poignant colors. Yep, yeah, colors did a great job. Back then, when you had this limited color palette with flat color, you had to know what you were doing when you were uh, coloring, you know. So anyhow, she, she's blowing the place up. She's like, I'm going to fly into this building, kick some ass. Oh, no, what's going to happen here? And then we get Hal. He's pissed. He's coming in. Cabal. Hal's like, I don't think so. Biatch. So he's flying in at her. The fight begins. Zap. Punch. I still kind of like this Hal Jordan figure here. Some aspects of this I like. Some I don't. I can say it. It's been 30 years. I don't, I really don't like looking at my old work. This is kind of painful. Do you ever work with any of those colors that airbrushed a copy of the art with a piece of acetate? Uh, I did one piece that way. It was for the Marvel swimsuit issue with Quasar. Or maybe I did more than one. That's the one I remember because my buddy Brad Vincata colored it. And that's how he colored it. So. Um, I don't like looking at my old work because it, this is the sad thing. As a creator, and this goes for any creator I've talked to, whether it comes to artwork, whether it comes to acting, whether it comes to uh, any, any creator, creative individual, writing, we generally tend to remember the bad stuff we did and not the good stuff. So we could have done seven great things out of 10, but as a creator, at least with me, I fixate on the three things I did poorly over seven things that I did really good. And if I could flip that, it would be so much better. Instead, you know, I've got to work on that daily. Um, because I look back at this, you know, 30 year old job, I don't look at it that often, but I can see some things I like, like this panel here where he's punching her. I kind of dig that this panel right here. I wish I would have twisted his body some because he just looks too flat, you know? So there are just different aspects. There's things I like, things I don't like. I remember my editor loved all this wacky design stuff I was doing in the background and breaking borders and stuff. So I remember the editor really liked that stuff coming down. No, look, they colored his teeth like flesh. Come on. North Free. Is Hal Jordan going to have to choke a bee? Yeah, he is. She's like, got the jaggy teeth. Look, 
John forgot to fill the black in in her teeth, right or below between her teeth. And then whoosh, and he comes flying back in my oh, trying to be Gil Kane type pose. Hits the ground, comes up at her. They use this panel in house ads for Eclipso. I remember looking through books building up to this Eclipso event. And they would use this panel in some of the house ads. Notice underneath his chin, his neck is colored green instead of flesh colored. Oopsie. Somebody grabs his leg. He's like, damn it. Starman. Um, I really wish, like, I like this. You know, I was doing really realistic, quote unquote, realistic proportions back then. And I still, like I said, I've always been more of a realistic type artist, but I wish I would have done uh, a little smaller. And it, it, it fluctuates because here I like the size of his head here compared to his body. You know, it's a little smaller than realistic proportions where a star man's head here is pretty much in line with a real person, six head high person, you know, blah, blah. Not quite superhero enough for me. But I remember my editor always commenting, dude, I love this graphic design crap you're doing. So that's nice. A little talky talky. Let's go get her. Flying up to get her, trying to talk some sense into her. Starman's not on Green Lantern's side. Oh, 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 no! Beating up Green Lantern, Kilowog's like, Hal, Hal, wake up, buddy. Wake up. No! Uh, this book has cool art, lots of energy going on. Well, if I had any to sell you, I'd sell. But if you go to a con, you can probably find it in the dollar box. So uh, do that. I just bought one off a, out of a dollar box a couple weeks ago at a con just to have on my spin rack. Anyhow, look at this destruction. And then we've got the chopper. Get to the chopper. Whoopity, 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 whoopity. Land this bird. I love stuff like this where it's just colored knockout. I probably wouldn't have done pink. I might have done red. My boy's holding the Game Boy, it looks like. They land the chopper. We got to go get Star. Oh, there's Star Sapphire. Fire at that bee. She's like, you're not affecting me. I'm out. Starman goes flying up. What the hell? This dude's everywhere. God, I love this Starman costume. Love it. Chappelle, brother. Got to love him. You know it. Don't make Wayne Brady smack a bitch. Talking sense into a woman, good luck. Guys, with comments like that, I'll never get ladies to watch my show. Chatting, chatting. Guy Gardner's like, I'm coming at you. Dun, dun, dun. He pulls out his laser gun. He's like, you aren't going to do anything to me with that. Want to bet? Zap. What? Oh, thank you. We got to get out of here. Okay. He's pissy Guy Gardner. Split lighting. Talking to this dude whose teeth are colored flesh. God, coloring back in the day. JP says, I've got a copy open right here. Well, if I ever see you at a con, JP, I'll sign it for you. Or if you want to mail it to me, I'll sign it for you and mail it back. Postage is on you. And uh, if there's anything else of mine you want, I can throw it back in when I send it back. These guys all chatting, chatting. Oh, we're at a mansion. I'm getting a phone call. I don't know if I should answer that. Nah. I'll just bounce that out. I'll get that phone call later. Uh, Starman flying up. Then we got a nice perspective shot of her flying to the moon. At this point in the job, page 41, I guarantee you John Beatty was getting, you know, even for a seasoned pro like himself, 56 pages, 55, whatever it was, it's a lot of work. John's like, you know what? I'm going to do this moon with a Sharpie. <laughs> I'm still not quite sure what he was thinking. Um, not my favorite technique here. John would probably say the same thing. But she's like, "What? what's all this? That's not a star. What is it? It's the Green Lantern Corps flying to the rescue. 
John Stewart, Kilowog. Um, you can see I flattened the book out for this one. Sue me. Uh, yeah, this could have de like you. You're totally missing this part of the guy here because of the fold. Anyhow, we even signed it. Look at that, Smith Beatty, ninety-two. Uh, you know, I kind of wish I would have done John Stewart in more perspective, flying at us. But I really want to get a cool shot in of his figure and stuff. Nah, you know, whatever. I got to draw Nort. Nort. Grift, Andy Grift, you haven't been shilling your stuff enough, but Andy's art book, if you love his work, everyone. Oh, thanks, but thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I'm a shell. Get yourself first, man. Have I not brought up first man? Come on now. Get this book. Sign up for two. What do we got here? To your comment earlier, guy lost his ring in GL of Earth. Job to how? After this issue, guy then works with Lobo. Oh, not cool. This dude's got a mushroom head. All these weird green lanterns. Anyhow, Kilowog's like, go get him. She's like, what? Here comes Hal to save the day. Look at that perspective. Boosh. Kilowog's like, yeah, we're on this. We're on it. Oh, that's why he has a yellow ring. I don't know any of this. Or maybe I did. Time to fight. Punch. 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 Whoa, how means business. Punch. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. It is the eye of the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Rising up. To them. Look at this. I got a banner going on down below now. Shilling. Hal, why are you punching me? Oh, this is when I started inking some of the book. I start. I did some inks on this book as well. She's falling because Hal's got the Eclipso. He saves her. She's Eclipso. Kilowog's like, no way. Uh, I think John Beatty inked this one figure. Boom. Big splash page. Hal's like, I'm coming in. Yo, I'm coming in. I am a tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Rise. Blasting at a couple GLs. Kilowog into the ground. John Stewart's like, uh-uh. I'm just, I'm just having fun as a 20-year-old kid. Throwing up some crazy panel layouts. That's how I did the moon. No Sharpie there. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. I think I inked this page. I did. This oh, I inked this page too. I remember this. I do like this layout though. How's like big fist coming at you? This is before they converted the green outline. I think that's still black ink. Let me see. Or is it converted? I can't tell. He's throwing up a big fist. I do still like this figure of uh, my man uh, John Stewart. So. A game like a swimmer's build, athletic. That figure I still like. 31 years later, do I have drawings with problems with it? Hell yeah, I do. John Venom Master Beatty. Yes, he is. Yeah, man. What's up, Andrew Taz? ABS Andy, always be shilling. Jim Taylor into his house. You still sound as excited describing this work as I'm sure when you were doing it. You know, like I said, I'm not a fan of looking back at my work, but every now and then there are some nuggets in there that I do enjoy. Jim, by the way, buddy, Jim and I have known each other for uh, 25 years or so. Jim, Facebook, love it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Got to build up my subscribers. Need to get to that 1,000 mark. This is a great, uh, this is a great, and fight. Yeah, baby. So Kapow there, he chucks a fist this way. How? Oh, no. He's like, no, don't do it. Flying right in. Look at that crotch shot of Hal. Hal's like, take this. He's like, oh, block it with a baby shield. Shoots a buoy knife at him. Punch, more graphic design stuff in the background. They're just using everything. Do we got the 
flying back here to shots of GLs and stuff, trying to get some perspective. Nort! Nort is in the house. Thank you, Jim. How punch? He's going to punch me. He's like, no, don't hit me. Kilowog's like, you who? I do like this back shot of Kilowog with the lighting I did back there. So there are things I like. He's got Hal Jordan. He's going to give him the punch of doom. He throws him to the ground. Hal's like, I'm coming back at you. Oh, you can feel the fight. You got to push, 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 jab, jab, duck, weave. Push, 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 push. You can tell I've never boxed a day in my life. Would you still do full pencils at the time when you were inking it yourself? Yes, because I didn't know I was going to be inking any of this stuff. I, I full penciled the whole job. John had it was like, dude, I got to help meet this deadline. Give me some help, yo. And I was like, you're paying me? I'll do it. Oh, I do sound effects every day. When I'm working to this day, I will speak the dialogue. If I've got the dialogue in front of me, like on this page, I'd probably be drawing it going, sure hate to do this to you being Hal's bod and all. And of course, I'd be like, Kapunch! Sub on YouTube complete. Love it. Not you see a Kilowog Andy worked on wearing pants. I know what that's a reference to. Anyhow, Kilowog punches his ass here. Kapunch! These two Green Lanterns, I can't remember this dude's name, flying up behind Kill. See, little Zipatone here. This is the regular dot pattern Zipatone. But they're flying up behind him. If I would have drawn this again, I would have put his hand up here so it's not cropped like that. And I might have drawn his fist coming into this panel. But I like the idea of one panel broken into two. Oh, Bodica. That was her name. Bodica is like, bam, in the back. If I did this panel again, because Bodica is a big chick. So she's supposed to be like really tall compared to her. But if I did this panel again, I would have pulled the camera more around to the front and got more perspective on it. Sub on to YouTube. Yes. Distinct lack of kill a dong. His kill a dong is in his tights. Bodica's like double hand punch, single hand punch. Eclipse, I was like, this can't be happening. How Jordan has Eclipse, was reaching out. They're reaching to each other. Reach each other. The beams. No, don't cross streams. Kaboom. Oh, a big explosion took everybody out. They're getting up weaker. I inked this page as well, except for this panel. This is John Beatty inks right here. Yep. John inked this panel. Hold on. Let me see. Can't tell on that one. John did ink this panel, though. I do remember inking this one. I hate the fact. Well, I guess this isn't white because he's lit. Like in modern day coloring, there's a few pages in here that if I could, if I had the money to throw around and pay a colorist, I would literally pay a colorist to recolor some of these pages with modern day coloring. But anyway, I got the big shot of Kilowog. Like, I'm out. I got to go help some people or something. I have no idea. But he's like, I'm out. They're all taken off under the rubble. Psh, big shot. Green Lantern. Like, I could have done this panel probably a little smaller, small, tiny figures, because there's not much of a word balloon. This panel could have been smaller. This panel could have been. So I could have made this panel bigger. But that's cool. Whatever. They're looking at their rings and they fly off together. This is totally not great placement because the corner of the caption touches the silhouette. You've got all this room over here. All they had to do was nudge it over a quarter of an inch and these silos would have been separate. But on my part, the silhouette of a palm tree touching her here is bad. So what are you going to do? Next, Detective Comics Annual 5. And that's it. We're back to the beginning. So that, my friends, is Green Lantern Annual number one. Will I ever look at it again? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to go to a website now to see about, uh, there's, there's a news site I want to see. A little news story. You know, I like to talk about news. 
Hold on. Hold on here. Trying to type and spell and all this stuff. Here we go. Disney and Lego reportedly renamed Boba Fett's iconic Star Wars ship. What? Disney has, I'm fresh reading this for the first time. Uh, Disney has reportedly given a new name to an iconic part of Star Wars universe. What? A new report from Jedi News reveals that Lego is now dropping the Slave One moniker for merchandise, instead opting to call the vehicle Bobo Fett Starship. Well, Bobo Fett Starship, let me tell you, that gets the tingles going. I mean, that is a menacing name. Look, up in the sky, it's Bobo Fett Starship. Oh, no, everybody run and hide. Ooh, that is so threatening sounding. No. Threatening sounding is, look, up in the sky, it's Slave One. Slave One. There's nothing wrong with that name. It's just a name. It's the name of a freaking ship. Bobo Fett's not coming down and, like, taking slaves and, pick, you know, picking people up, capturing them, and taking slaves and stuff. It's just the name of his ship, for the love of God. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Hyper Kaiju's, like, Villains can't be menacing. Exactly. Boba Fett Starship is not menacing. Let me tell you why. Because just like Hut Slayer Leia, what? She's not called. What? Are you kidding me? I have not heard of that. She's not Slave Leia anymore. That is ridiculous. We're not calling it Slave One anymore. Lego Star Wars lead designer Michael Lee Stockwell revealed this is Boba Fett Starship. Starship, you know what I think of when I hear that? I see Boba Fett on stage with Starship going, We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. Why don't they call the ship Soy One? Look, up in the sky, it's Soy One. Uh, oh, 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 hold on. They officially renamed Slave Leah to Hut Slayer Leah. Well, that doesn't sound anything like Slut Slayer Leah at all now, does it? Let me see. Let's rename it to something that rhymes with the word slut. And the way she's dressed, well, it's Slut Leah. How stupid. This is ridiculous. And in fact, guys, because of you, I looked, I searched, and I found that Slave Leah art I want to show you guys the other day. So I'm going to show you Slave Leah. Do, 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 do. Excuse me as I'm looking for it. I found it. That doesn't mean I. Don't have to go into a folder with hundreds of files to actually pull it up. There she goes. It's loading. Oh. There she is, Slave Leah. I bet mistresses wouldn't be offensive. Yeah. In, uh, hold on, newscaster, newscaster voice. NPR voice. In related news, Skid Row to rename the album Slave to the Grind. Moving on, or big newscaster voice. <laughs> In related news, Skid Row to rename the album Slave to the Grind. Noise! Ah, you know it. This is one I take the shows to sell as 11 by 17 prints, baby. Nice cardstock paper. 11 by 17. J. Scott did an amazing version. J. Scott does an amazing version of almost every chick he draws. So, yes, this is a slave Leia. 
I did. In the original drawing for this, she was topless for the customer, but there's no way I could sell a topless one at cons. So I redid it with her top on. And people that asked, do I color my own work? This is a big yes, as I colored this. So there you have it. Kabuye, kabuye, kabuye. Um, let's see what other type of news we might have going on today on the old comic book site. We talked about that garbage as it's hot garbage, changing the name from slave one to stupid. Because that's what they just call it stupid. At least stupid, you know. Oh, slave one. Oh, NBC cancels fan favorite season, fan favorite series after four seasons. Where are they talking about? I honestly don't know, and I do watch a lot of TV shows. Yet another axe has fallen at NBC with the network canceling another fan favorite TV series. The Hollywood Reporter brings the drama. Good Girls has been canceled. Damn it to hell. I love that show, Good Girls. Uh, hold on here. Got another comment. Looks like my stream is frozen for some reason. Why am I frozen? I don't know what's going on. Have I ever used post-it notes at cons? Uh, yeah, I put them on my Jungle Lords uh, all nude comic. Guys, am I frozen? Let me know. Batwoman continues, unfortunately so. Anyhow, good girls. I think the show Good Girl. I think the show Good Girls is really awesome. Um, I don't know why I'm looking frozen here on YouTube. I'm gonna re redo this here. Hold on. So my camera's frozen. Let me do this. But you can still hear me. Hello, there's my face. As long as you guys can hear me, that's what matters. I'm going to start the camera again. All right, we'll just do it this way. So you guys can hear me, correct? Jim Taylor, have a good day. Not frozen on Facebook, he says. That's weird. Uh, women can be canceled. Oh, yeah, Gina Carano. Well, I'm serious. I like the show Good Girls. Uh, Let's see. They, those hope for a streamer to pick up the show in the wake of NBC and will be sad to hear that they already tried it. It didn't work. Shift the series to Netflix or fifth season, but those efforts have imploded. The series will not make the move. Christina Hendricks, Mae Whitman, and Reda star in the series telling the story of a trio of women trapped. Yep, I know that. I just want to know if they're going to wrap it up somehow because if they leave this season hanging, I'm done watching it. You know? I like bad girls. Who doesn't like bad girls? All right, you guys can hear me. You don't need to see my pretty face. Uh, in linear, good girls has never really captured the audience. Well, gee, maybe because you bounce time slots. Uh, so on streaming video, this means the show had a direct pipeline. I can't believe it's going to be canceled. Just wrap up the storyline. No way, Manifest is canceled? Are you shitting me? I like Manifest. Zoe's Extraordinary Play Playlist was a garbage TV show. I don't give a crap about that show being canceled. But I tell you what, I am not, not. A fan of Manifest being canceled, too. Now I got to click on that link. See the rabbit holes you guys got me going down? Let me look at my camera again. Still frozen. What the hell? As long as you, as long as you guys can hear me. Last week brought the shocking news. NBC's canceled the fan favorite TV series Manifest after three seasons. Then to the show. Are you kidding? That ended on a cliffhanger as well. Damn it! I really wish they would let these people know 
mid so they could at least wrap up a story because that ended on a big cliffhanger. Well, you know what? I'm tired of investing in these shows <laughs> just for them to be canceled. Let me go to some comic book news. He says I'm getting bent over. I'm getting bent over a barrel dry today. Image Comics released a statement on War Warren Ellis controversy. I'm sure that's the same stupid statement I already heard. Uh, until until Warren Ellis digs up all the bodies and brings back to life all the women he murdered, he will no longer work for Image Comics or in comics. I mean, that's fair. He murdered women, right? No. Oh, he didn't. He just wanted to get laid and uh, was dealing with women in their 30s, I guess. Well, I mean, you can't do that. Rob Liefeld returns. I'm excited about this. Uh, what do we got? TV series only made for a couple seasons. I mean, I don't have a problem with TV series launching knowing they're going to end in a few seasons. Probably frozen from all that added on this site. I have no idea. Anyhow, this is what we'll end on. Rob Liefeld is going to be drawing an X-Force one shot called X-Force Kill Shot. Uh, it'll have Cable and the squad pulling together five different teams from across time, time to lead an attack on Strife. And we've got an exclusive first look at the new slick cover. Very cool. I like Major X when it came out. I like Rob's art still. I think it's exciting. It does what the it does its job. I will buy this book. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I don't understand why anyone even feels sorry for Ellis. He's one of the progeny progenitors of all this BS. He murdered that ass. Yeah, he did. Uh, his message board was a petri dish for SJ was it, social justicism. Never went to the message boards. Can't tell you. Um, guys, I appreciate you for joining me once again on the show. I will be back tomorrow one more time with the camera. Still frozen. Look at that gorgeous face. I'll be back tomorrow. But until then. I'm going to end you with something a little different. If you just joined, sign up now for First Man Volume 2. Link in the description below. Let's build the signups, baby. Let's do it.